We're going to look at the um, underlying definitions and introduce you to the topic of thermochemistry in this unit. So let's start with the definition that you see there on the screen. It's the study of the relationship between chemistry and en energy. So in chemistry, we're studying changes, you know, the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. While those changes are taking place, we have energy either having to be supplied to make it happen or energy is given off as it takes place. So we, I mean, we interact with this all the time. The battery in your car is supplying the energy by way of a chemical reaction to turn your engine over. Um, in your cell phone, you've got a battery. Batteries are a wonderful example of converting between chemistry and energy. But uh, for me, it's a cold day here and I have a gas furnace. And so this chemical reaction is taking place and it is producing warmth for my home, a lot of warmth as that energy is being um, not produced. It is being converted out of the chemical bonds that were in the compounds. So we're going to be kind of just introducing the topics of this in this unit. Okay, so a lot of key definitions that we're going to come across here. So what is energy? Energy is the capacity to do work. It is not necessarily doing work, but it has the capacity to do so. So let me give you just an example of something that isn't doing work, but it has the capacity to do work. Um, it's not great work, it's destructive work, but it's work, okay? So we have a big lake being held back by a dam. That water is being held back there, and it has a lot of stored energy in it. It has the capacity to do work. Imagine if the dam were to burst and it were to flood the valley below. It would tear down a lot of houses, so that would be the capacity to do work. If it's doing work, that is energy as well. Okay, so what is work? Work is producing a force acting through a distance, okay? So if you're pushing an object in a certain a distance, then that's work. So when the water breaks the dam, it is pushing the house across the distance with a certain amount of force. So that is what work is. When you've had a physics class, if you've had a physics class, you've talked about work that way. We'll talk about work eventually in this class, but we'll always talk about what's called PV work, pressure volume work, and it has to do with gases. But it's the same idea. As the gas expands, it's pushing against its environment across a distance with a certain amount of force. All right, so energy comes in two distinct forms. It is either kinetic energy the object is moving, the water is moving across the valley and destroying houses as it goes, that's kinetic energy, or it is potential energy, it's energy available by virtue of, its, of the object's position. So when the dam is in place and it's being holding back that water, that water has the potential to turn into kinetic energy and destroy houses, so it is stored there. So a lot of times we think of potential energy as stored energy. I have two ways that I kind of always kind of compare. When I think kinetic energy, and I'll call it Ke, I think of it as energy, okay, of motion. Just energy of motion. And I think of potential energy as stored energy. And all your energy is going to fit into one form or the other. It is either moving or it is stored and it has got the potential to do work. Now those are going to be, did I use the word form? Yes, forms of energy, boom, boom. There's other ways that we can categorize and maybe forms is not the best word for it. Other ways that we can categorize energy that it still fits into one of these two categories. And the ones that we use most commonly in chemistry would be chemical energy. What is chemical energy? Well, it is stored energy. It is energy stored within the structure of the compound. The way the atoms are held together, there is energy stored within there, okay? And um, so that is a kind of potential energy because it is a stored energy. So chemical energy fits into that category. 
Thermal energy is another big one that we use in chemistry, and this little section is called thermochemistry, right? So thermal energy gets us down to the movement of the molecules. We can think about the water being held back and it's not moving, there's no motion, and it's stored energy. But if you started to look down into the molecules themselves, the molecules are actually moving around. So if we're looking at that portion, of that energy of the, the water. It is a kinetic energy. And all molecules, whether they're solid, liquid, or gas, they're always moving down, down there on that molecular level. So it would be a type of kinetic energy. Oh, well, let's see if I can, before I move on, let's see if I can think of some other um, kinds of energy. We could have mechanical energy, we could have solar energy, we could have electrical energy. So we have all kinds of different, electrical energy is the electrons moving through a wire, solar energy, energy coming in from the sun, uh, mechanical energy, what's happening when your motor is moving in your car, your engine is turning over. Um, so all of these different categories, and I suppose that'd be a good word for it, would fit into one of these two forms of energy. Now regardless of how we pigeonhole it, and what we call it, okay? We will often be converting from one type to another. So let's just think about this example here. The solar energy is coming in, let's not talk about that yet. The solar energy is coming in, hitting those panels. Why do we do that? Because we want to get in electricity out of it. So we'll be able to convert it into electricity. Or maybe you've got some solar panels somewhere and their whole job is to warm water up. So you have water flowing through it, the sun's hitting it, it's warming the water up. What's it doing? It's converting it into thermal energy. So we can convert between different types of energy. And a lot of times people think, well, I've created. I've created energy, but we don't create. Forms can be converted from one form, energy can be converted from one form to another form, but it is not created or destroyed in the process, okay? There's conversions all the time from one form to another, but it's not created or destroyed. So when I warm my heat, warm my home by the heat of a, a furnace, and I say, oh, I'm, it's producing so much thermal energy. It's just warming up my house wonderfully. It is producing thermal energy, but it's not producing energy out of nothing. It is actually converting thermal energy out of the chemical energy that was placed in there. Okay, so we aren't creating or destroying it. We're converting them between. And that's called the law of conservation of energy. So it's assumed that the amount of energy is a constant, okay, and it's just being converted between. Okay, so we talked about converting from one type of energy to another type of energy. Here we're going to talk about transferring energy from one place to another place, okay? So we have to define some terms associated with that. The system is a part of the universe of interest. So let's imagine for just a moment that we go back to my example of me heating my home with a furnace. Inside of my furnace there is a nice flame uh, taking place in which natural gas is burning to make heat and that heat is going out into my home. I could call that chemical reaction that's taking place there as my system. And very often the chemical reaction is the system, okay? That's how we would define it. But a reaction doesn't have to be taking place for that to be the system. Let's think of a simpler case. Let's say we want to, to drink some hot coffee. Um, we're going out somewhere in a cold world and we put it into a, a thermos or maybe a mug that's nicely sealed that we have put our hot coffee in there. And we want to keep that in there. That might be my system, okay? Does it stay hot forever? No. If you wait long enough and come back and drink that coffee, it's going to be cold. Well, what happens to it? Well, it goes to the surroundings, okay? And the surroundings is what we call everything else in the universe. So the system plus the surroundings equals the entire universe. Now, usually we don't really care what's happening on Juto Jupiter or Pluto um, and really 
a whole universe. The immediate surroundings is good enough, but the surroundings would be everything outside of that hot coffee mug, right? Or the surroundings would be my home outside of that reaction. Now this is what we know about transferring energy. And that's the statement that's written down here at the bottom, but there's a typo in it. The surroundings will gain the exact same amount of energy lost by the system. Oops, S, I'm pushing a button now, I guess. S-Y-S-T-E-M. All right? So the surroundings will gain the exact same amount of energy lost by the system or vice versa. You could say the surroundings loses or... Yeah, the surrounding loses the exact same amount of energy gained by the system. But we're talking about um, heat going into the surroundings here. We're talking about heat going into the surroundings here. So the system is losing energy in both of my examples and the surroundings is gaining it. So we could put a measure on this. How much is it, is it losing? Well, this is where it started and this is where it ended. So between here and here is how much I lost, right? So we could attach a value to that some value, let's call it X, got lost here. Well, if it's gonna lose this much, it's gonna to have to gain this much over here. So it's gonna gain that same X value and take me up to here on my little gauge here. So whether or not you're thinking about the law of conservation of energy in terms of converting between types of energy, or you're thinking about it in terms of transferring energy from one place to another, in this case, energy is conserved. It is the law of conservation of energy regardless. Now, on the left-hand side, since it is losing energy, okay, the system's change in energy is negative, right? It is going down, and that's a negative change. Over here on the right, the surroundings change is positive. It has a positive value because it's getting more. So if I lose weight, my change in mass, my change in weight is negative. If I gain weight, it's positive. That's the way a change is always, okay? And that's what that delta stands for. It stands for change, right? Change in energy of the system is negative in this case and it's positive and what we know is Whatever the energy change is of the system, it has to equal the negative of the energy change of the surroundings. They are equal but opposite in sign. One is gaining and one is losing. So here we are having gone through the foundational definitions associated with thermal chemistry, different types. So you types of energy, the system, the surroundings, um, and work. So you just got to make sure that you commit this foundational language to memory. Because as we go through chemistry, we will refer back to energy. Because very often we tie together the reaction, the process, with the energy associated with the process.